want something to talk about? Anything. I've got a position on a trawler about ooh, 15 miles out called a seagrass. And I've got something on my scope. It appears to be a fog bank. It's about 25 miles out moving in their direction. Ahoy, mateys. This is KAB Antonio Bay. Stevie Wayne here, beaming a signal across the sea. For the men of the seagrass, 15 miles out tonight, a warm hello, and keep a watch out for that fog bank heading in from the east. Now, in the meantime, relax with me while I play this song from the Coupe de Ville's, dedicated just to you. He's crazy. There's no fog bank out there. What do you know about her? She owns that lighthouse. I know that. Her son plays Little League with my kid brother. She's a mother? <laughs> I thought you were happily married. <laughs> Not that happy. <laughs> fog bank out there. Hey. There's a fog bank out there. So have you ever been traveling along the ocean shore and seen this? Row upon row upon row of fishermen standing on the beach. Or on rocks, or even on piers, fishing. And ever wonder, do they really catch anything? What do they catch? What do they use for bait? Well, if you ever have thought that, then you've been just like me. If you haven't guessed it by now, I love to fish. I mean, I really love to fish. But being a police officer for 33 years and working in the strangest shifts imaginable while trying to raise four kids at the same time didn't always allow me to fulfill my passion. But now that I'm a full-time RVer, that's a different story. I fish as often as I can, everywhere I can. But up until our stay in Galveston, it had been pretty much limited to freshwater fishing with light tackle. That is, until I met Mike and Jim two of my RVing neighbors staying at Jamaica Beach RV Park. That's one of the really awesome things about RVing, is that you meet some of the nicest people, and Mike and Jim were prime examples of that. Despite never having fished from the shore and the ocean before my entire life, these guys invited me along and told me what to get, what to bring, and what to expect. And boy, did we have a lot of fun. What made it even a little bit more exciting is that for the first few days we were in Galveston, the weather was perfect. Then fog set in, a lot of fog. And for almost a week straight, we had fog morning, afternoon, and night. Now for some people that are used to fog, that might not sound that exciting. However, when you wade into the ocean, up to your chest, 100 yards away from the shore, and that's not an exaggeration, look around at a 360 degree angle and don't see land anywhere, that can be a little bit intimidating. But what the heck, it's all about fishing, right? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, so we're out here on uh, Jamaica Beach and the fog has lifted a little bit, as you can see. Probably maybe only about 100 yards, but uh, as you can see, I am in my brand new waders. First time I've ever surf fished in my entire life. I've got a rig set up here, um, probably not the most accurate rig, but we don't really have anything uh, to uh, show us how to, uh, we don't have anybody out there to show us how to do this professionally. I'm out here with my friend Jim. He and I are both uh, freshwater fishermen, so we're gonna give a stab in the dark here. And see we're gonna be using some squid, um, and I gotta be honest with you, like I said, all my fishing uh, has been, I did fish off of a boat, like a big fishing boat, a couple times off LA, caught some fish, but they had everything set up for us, and we're gonna be using some squid, oh, the biggest God. hook. A um, little pricey, the waders were a hundred bucks. The boots were separate. Yeah, boots are separate. Boots were about 45. Okay. But, uh, yeah, but the, these were 99. Yeah, they feel good. 
I got my gel and all, so yeah, they look nice. They're nice, I like that. So you just wait out about, what, waist deep and cast out? Yeah, waist, or a little more, depending. We're gonna, any particular place you suggest hooking this up, or probably just anywhere? Now I know why they said make sure you bring a rag along. So one of the first things people that have done some previous um, surf fishing before in the past, so the first thing they're going to say is, Phil, you got the wrong kind of pole. And I do. I got a freshwater pole, um, which is not these big surf rods they've got. But I spent so much money on these waders and everything, I didn't want to spend any more money that I've already got. And I have half-assed jerry-rigged this thing. This is probably completely wrong, but you know, I'm out here to have a good time fun and see what happens. So we're gonna wait out here and uh, do my first cast. Check out my brand new waders here. My first few steps, it is keeping me dry. Right up to my knees, completely dry. It's actually kind of warm too. Visibility is zero, so we're hoping the bull sharks are not out here in the winter time. All right, first cast, here we go. Letting the line go out. One thing I should have had, and I did not, were these little fishing pole holders, which are basically PVC pipe. Jim had an extra one, so he was kind enough to let me borrow one of his. I'm gonna set this. How far out? You go pretty far out to cast out, or? No. I want to throw water again back to there. I don't know if Mike wanted this one. Or... Mike thinks he's got one. He's not sure. You want him, Mike? Mike thinks he's got a fish here, so. Obviously, I haven't got anything, but we're gonna see if Mike's got any luck. One gentleman here, he did catch one. Mike thinks he's got himself a pretty good fish here. Oh, you got one, look at that. Wow, a good one. Way cool. Hey, good job, Mike.
shit, I caught one. I'm reeling in, and I thought I had a bunch of seaweed and I caught a fish. <laughs> I don't know what kind of fish it is, but I caught one. Hey! <laughs> I caught one! <laughs> a catfish, saltwater catfish. All right, at least I didn't get skunked. I didn't even know I had him. I thought I, I thought I had a bunch of seaweed. Okay, so a critique of my first time ever surf fishing in the ocean. Um, had a lot of fun, just like you know the old phrase, you know the worst day fishing is better than the best day working. And when you're retired, it's, it's just it just goes hand in hand. Anyways, had a really good time. Um, a couple things that I learned, and again, this video is not for people that have surf fished before, know what you're doing. This was for people that have never surf fished before, you know, like me raised in Arizona. You know, I know how to freshwater fish, I know how to catch bass and catfish and things like that, but have never surf fished. And with that limited knowledge, I uh, went out and did some surf fishing. So, this is what I learned. The waders were definitely a good buy. I would um, recommend these. They worked out great. They kept me totally dry. Um, these are the pants that I wore. They are totally dry. Socks are totally dry. So the waders are a good thing. And I could see myself using those in a freshwater lake as well. They're about $100 though, so be prepared for that. One other thing is that there are waders that have boots attached in them. Um, these waders did not. So there are some waders that have boots kind of attached or sewn into them, or you can buy your boots separately. If you get the waders with the boots sewn into them, basically, it's gonna be a lot more money. There was some, the place I was looking at, they were about $350 a piece. You may be able to find some cheaper ones, but that's what I was looking at, it was about $350. Or you can buy the waders, which I got for $100, and the boots on top of those, which are about another $45 or $50. And I'll show you those boots here. So these are the additional boots that uh, I got for um, surf fishing. And again, this is separate than the waders. Um, they're about $45 each. They worked out really well. Um, I could feel some water getting into them. They're not uh, waterproof. You could feel some water getting into them as you're sloshing around, but um, it wasn't bad at all. And it's got a really hard rubber bottom in case you step on a stingray or something like that. It should stop a stingray from um, sticking up into your foot. That's one thing you want to be careful. Either make sure you get a heavy shoe with a really thick heavy sole or you have to do what's referred to as a stingray shuffle as you go out into the uh, surf looking for fish but uh, these worked out really well and again what happens is you put your waders on and then there's like a kind of like a sewn on sock i'll describe i'll show it to you in a minute but there's a sewn on sock with your waders and you put that inside here so that's your sewn on sock again you're going to put your waders on and this is all attached sewn in i don't know how it is but basically it's all uh it's all included as part of your waders. Put your foot in here, and you really can't, I mean, you could, but you really can't walk out on the surface, something like this. You can step on something sharp, even just a shell, and you're really gonna feel it. So again, you put your waders on, you put your feet in here, and then your boots go outside of this. I found out, so the next thing, which was actually Karen's recommendation, was don't wear any cotton type of shirt. Although the waders came up to here a couple times, water did splash up to me. One time, one of the waves hit me, it felt like a board hit me in the chest. So you want to make sure you've got something that will dry off pretty well. This is a nylon top, long sleeve. It's a little bit damp, but it's really it works out really well. Originally, I had a cotton shirt on. Karen said that was probably a bad idea, and she was 100% right. If I had a cotton shirt on, I'd probably be miserable out there. It'd probably still be soaking wet and everything like that. So make sure you beat your dress appropriately. So again, I'm about a size 10. When you go into your waders, you do not have your shoes on. You go into your socks. You don't wear your shoes inside your waders. And because these waders have got, uh, again, like a, an outside footy pad, sock, whatever you're going to call it, sewn on the outside and your foot's inside there, these shoes have got to be bigger. So these shoes are actually size 13. So you get them bigger, so you can put this whole padding pad inside your shoe. So again, I'm a size 10. I got a size 13 to, uh, to wear. So the next biggest thing that I learned, and anyone who's done any kind of surf fishing knows this, this is as simple as your ABCs, but when you've never done it before, you didn't know. I had the wrong kind of rod and reel. You know, I'd already spent, you know, $100 on the waders, and I spent, you know, another 50 basically on the, uh, 
on the boots and you know and I you know fish a saltwater fishing license and things like that I said you know I got a lot of money invested in this already do I need to go out and yet spend another 50 75 100 200 dollars whatever it might be on a big surf rod and my thought was no I'm not going to do that I mean I, I see people with big surf rods all the time big reels big poles but I thought I really don't need to do that I'm just going to use my light tackle and that should suffice big mistake first thing I found out was my reel did not hold enough fishing string. I waded out out to my chest, I cast it out pretty far, and by the time I walked back to the shore, all of my line was gone, it was already out. So your light freshwater tackle is just not gonna hold enough fishing string. I mean, you need you know a couple of hundred yards easy. So that's one of the reasons why you wanna get a bigger reel that holds a lot of string on it, because you wait out there to your chest, you cast out by the time you're back at the shore, you know, that's another 100 yards away. I mean, you're out of string. Apparently the reason for the long rod is that number one, it assists in casting. I love to fish. I know a lot about fishing, but I never knew that a longer rod assists in the distance that you can cast. I did not know that. That's what they're telling me at least. But the other thing is there's so much seaweed out there and the current is pulling your line all the time that it's it feels like you constantly got a fish on line. It's tugging all the time, your line's jerking down because when you're freshwater fishing, you know, you can feel that. You want to feel that sensitivity of the rod, but when you're saltwater fishing, again, that current is moving your, your bait back and forth and, uh, you know, you, you, you need that thicker, that thicker, bigger rod. But with that being said, and all the mistakes that I did, um, I was actually one of two people that caught a fish today. Um, I caught a freshwater catfish. And um, a couple things I learned, when I went to the bait shops, one of the people at the bait shops had recommended a really big hook, and you did, I didn't need a big hook. Um, it was basically, I had caught, I've caught freshwater catfish bigger than the saltwater catfish that I caught. It wasn't very big, I mean, you guys saw it, it was probably maybe a pound and a half, two at the most. It wasn't a very big catfish. In fact, it didn't even pull up a fight. Uh, when you watch the video, I'm reeling it in, I'm feeling I've got more seaweed, and I'm reeling it in, all of a sudden it's a fish on. And the weight of the seaweed and the current took all the fight away from the fish. I didn't even know I even had one. Okay, so that's it for today. We are gonna go back out tomorrow at um, about 11 o'clock. We're gonna try to do some fishing again. We'll see if we catch anything. Okay, so welcome to day two of Texas fog fishing. Um, the fog's actually lifted quite a bit uh, from yesterday and then even last night when I was driving around in Galveston. It was, it was pretty heavy, but uh, it's lifted quite a bit. And if you remember from the yesterday's video, I told you about some of the good things I did right, which was like buying these waders. They were excellent. And then also some of the bad things I did um, wrong about this were I thought I was just going to bring in some light tackle and a regular fishing pole and reel that I would use for freshwater fishing. And I found out that's just not going to work. Although I did catch a fish yesterday, um, I ran out of, I ran out of, um, of line. Uh, the spool just wouldn't hold enough line. So what I did do last night is what I should have done um, when I first started this was I went out and bought a much bigger pole and a much bigger reel and uh, got 20 pound test on here and the pole I think is 11 feet long I believe I believe 11 12 feet long but uh, should be able to get me to cast out quite a bit I've got a three ounce weight on here right now uh, I've still got some bait left over I've got some mullet which is basically like if you don't know what a mullet is it looks like a big minnow and I've got some squid, some shrimp left over. But right now I'm out here by myself. Uh, my friends are gonna join me here in a little bit, but I'm all set up and uh, gonna cast out and then I'm gonna come back and have a little bit of lunch, uh, courtesy of Subway, and uh, we'll see what we catch. it out got it way the heck out there um, the longer the rod absolutely the further you're going to cast because I, I can tell that and I got plenty of string left over and I actually got out of the water this time because I had string left over because they will make it back to Jeep so the tight line we're gonna see what happens at Subway restaurants you choose your freshly baked bread meats cheese 
and veggies to make a sub that's just right for you. Come in and create yours today. Subway, eat fresh. It's always hard to tell whether it's just the current or a clump of seaweed or whatever, but, and the pole's so thick that when I hook these one and two pound fish, I don't get a lot of fight, but this does look like I've got a fish up here. So I'm gonna go reel this in and see what we got. It could just be a clump of seaweed, but we're gonna find out. It's fighting like a fish. I mean, it feels like a fish. I don't think it's seaweed. I mean, if it is seaweed, this is giving me the best fight in the last two days of seaweed. Checking the tip of that rod. See, it's going back down. It's fighting like a fish. Well, we're, gonna, we're gonna find out here. But I'll tell you this, like I said, if this is seaweed, this is giving me the best fight of any seaweed I've had in the last two days. And I'll also tell you, if this is a fish, this is at least a five pounder. Either that or it's a very small fish with a lot of seaweed on it. Uh, it's a lot of seaweed, I can see that. Is anything mixed in with it? Are you kidding me? Just seaweed? Oh, how disappointing is that? Just seaweed. No, there is there a fish in there. No, there is a fish in there. Yeah, there is a fish in there. Look at that. A clump of seaweed and a fish. About a, about a two pound fish and five pounds worth of seaweed. Oh, look at this crap. fishing you probably didn't enjoy this video too much but the point of all of this is not about fishing it's about trying new and different things I started this video up by asking a simple question and that was have you ever driven by a beach and seen people fishing and ask yourself I wonder what they catch life is too short it's not about asking if they catch anything it's about doing it yourself even if you've never done it before I have never surf fished in the ocean in my life and despite only catching a few fish I fell in love with it because I tried it. So whether it's fishing, archery, horseback riding, painting, photography, or even swimming with sharks, the point of this video is to just do it. So now that I've explained my intent here, hopefully you like this little fishing expedition video that we put up. Wait just a minute, did I say swimming with sharks? Well, you'll just have to keep watching Blue Line RV Adventures to see what that's all about. Straight down. Straight down. If you did like this video, or maybe some of our previous videos, don't forget to subscribe. And remember, at Blue Line RV Adventures, we got your six.
Hey, there's a fog bank out there. <laughs>